Not given to wine. There's got to be questions on this one. <laughs> what does it mean to be given to wine? And I'm going to go over some ideas here. Uh, at Calvary Chapel, we are not prohibitionists. Okay, we're not. We, we, can't, we can't look at the Bible and it doesn't say thou shalt not have wine. It, thou shalt not partake. It doesn't say that. So, so I, can't, I can't land on that in a, in a prohibitionist kind of way, land on, no, a Christian can't drink. Okay, I can't, I can't say that. Um, now, there's literally over 200 verses that say be not drunk with wine in one way or another. So... I can say, if you're drunk, you're in sin. <laughs> and then the question is, well, Dave, what, is, what do you mean by drunk? <laughs> right? Because in a room this size, we, like, we, we, we can have, I guarantee, one, two, three, four, you know, however many people are here, we might have as many different definitions of what it means to be drunk. What is it? The Bible doesn't really say exactly what it means. Okay? I... Uh, Here's an interesting thing. Uh, the Bible also says to, to adhere to the laws of your land. So if the state of Florida says 0.08, they, they, they consider that drunk. And if you're operating a vehicle, they say, no, no, no. <laughs> so that would probably be a good place to start just to say, hey, look, uh, science has said that if I have, if my blood alcohol level is above 0.08, then I, my, my, I'm beginning to be impaired in how I'm operating a, a, a moving vehicle per se, or a machinery. I probably shouldn't come to work impaired, right? Right? Yeah, yeah, let's not come to work impaired. Should we come to, to church impaired? Right, no? Okay, so, yeah, can you imagine? But, but you wouldn't believe over the 15 years that I've been doing this, how many people have said, but Pastor Dave, the, the, okay, so that might be good for that person, but I, I can handle my liquor. Like, so that person might only be able to have one, but I can have at least three or four before. I'm, I'm good to drive at three or four. And so here's what we're not going to do. We're not going to have breathalyzers to check our, you know, we, we're not going to ask that you walk around with a breathalyzer. I'm, sorry, I'm, I'm 0.06. 0 0.06? 0 okay, I'm good. I'm, let me, how much more do I need before I get to 0.08? 0.07.4 if I'm looking if I'm looking at myself like a gigantic chemistry experiment I think I might have a problem okay the violation of this verse what does it mean to be given to wine it doesn't say it doesn't say have not wine it says be not given to wine the idea is the heart what's the heart behind it, it is, if you go to a wedding and there's a glass of wine in front of you it's not a sin to drink it I, you know, and you'll never hear a, a Calvary pastor come and, come and get you for that. Okay? But if you have an open bar party, and, and then somebody comes and says, Pastor David, I can't believe your deacon, you know, you let deacons have bar, uh, parties like that and open bar, I'm like, you're, you're going to get called in. Yeah. Because, we need, because now we have a reputation that's associated with it. It goes back to being blameless. Are we, are we able to be blamed, right? And so, uh, so you know, the Christians have divided on this topic, and it's incredible how far the, the division is on this topic. I'll just tell you how, how I've, you know, my wife and I have chosen to handle this topic. So, like, I, I've never had an issue with alcohol. It's never been a problem for me. I, I, can, I think twice that I've gone over the board, right, in my distant past. Uh, but I, I don't mind having a glass of wine with dinner every now and then. But here's what we decided. Once we got into ministry, my wife and I decided that alcohol in this way is going to be a thing of our past. And here's why. Because my position, people look at a, a, somebody in the leadership in the church and, they, and they're, they're going to use you. They're going to use you. Or your position can cause somebody to stumble. And so, like, I'll never forget, one day we had our Bible study group. My wife makes some killer food, man. She's an incredible cook. Allison's shaking her head back there. She's like, yes, she does. So, one night, we had our group over, and my wife made a chicken marsala. Incredible. Chicken marsala. And 
one of the guys, we, were, we prayed and we were going to sit down and eat. And one of the guys came up to me and says, Dave, can I talk to you? I said, yeah, what's up? He goes, Dave, I, I, I'm so sorry. I have to go. I'm like, what is it? He says, the smell of the Marsala wine is killing me. He's an alcoholic. He, he is like just that because you cook with the wine. Hopefully the alcohol burns off, but now it's in the air and just, it's the smell. And it, it was it was starting to really, really drive him to think about. And, and so he had to leave. And I respected him for being honest like that. And now we don't make chicken marsala, for, you know. <laughs> but, but here's the thing. At our altar calls, 70%, 70% of the people that go forward at our, at our altar calls are in recovery or a halfway house. Seven out of 10 of all the people that go forward at our, at our altar calls are in recovery or in a halfway house. That's a real stat. And so we have a church body that is full of people struggling with substance abuse. So if I'm, yes, I have the liberty to partake, but as I grow in my, as I take on this leadership role, and I, and I say, all right, is it, is it worth me causing somebody to stumble? If, I'm, if they see me drinking at a, a beer, which is part of my Christian liberty, I could if I wanted to. I, it doesn't bother. I'm not going to get drunk. I'm not. But would that cause somebody to stumble? I had somebody else do this. I was at uh, a restaurant that my wife works at, and she closes. She's a manager. She closes the restaurant. She's there until like, 1 in the morning, closing out the cash registers and this and that. So I'll go and be with her on nights that she closes so that she's not alone in the restaurant. It's a storefront uh, restaurant. And so the, I'll bring my Bible, I'll bring my computer, I'll work on whatever I'm teaching or whatever's coming up, emails, whatever. And, and I'll sit at the bar because it's the most well-lit place in the restaurant. It's comfortable, it's well-lit. I can get club soda or whatever. And I had somebody come up to me, a lady come up to me very upset one day because her husband was walking by the storefront and saw Pastor Dave sitting at the bar. And he came home and told her, because apparently he has a problem with alcohol, and she's been getting on his case, like, oh, you know, Christians can't drink, and da 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 She's trying to get him to stop drinking because it's causing their family hardship. And he says, look, your pastor drinks. He's sitting at the bar at one o'clock in the morning. He's like, don't tell me that anymore, lady. So they, I was used by this guy to remain in his sin. And I didn't even have alcohol. I'm just sitting at the bar. So now, guess what I don't do anymore? I don't sit at the bar anymore. I'll go sit in a booth. And, and another one, I was, at, uh, I was at a kid's birthday party, and they had this um, Elsa frozen, like frozen blue frosty drink, like machine that they rented for the birthday party. And I had a clear cup with blue frosty drink in it. And, I, and then somebody put, took a picture and posted it on Facebook and the comments, oh, Pastor Dave, what you got in the cup, this and that. And then I'm like, you know, so here, and, and here's the thing, like there's, there's, people are always gonna do that. They're always gonna do that. And we shouldn't go crazy, drive ourselves crazy, tr trying to like, okay, I can't have blue frosty, fro <laughs> I can't, you know, or make sure the kid is in the picture with the frozen thing. Or now, oh, you're giving alcohol to the kid now. <laughs> but here's, here's what I can tell you. I can tell you that it should, it should be something that we think about and concern ourselves with about my reputation. Is my reputation a one that is given to alcohol? The word, uh, here's, a, here's a big fancy Greek word for you. The word given to, says the Bible says not to be given to wine, is prosechontas. Everybody say prosechontas. I always thought that was a fun word. Isn't that fun? It's fun. I, it means, you know, I, I don't even know if it's going to help you in, in any way. But the word prosechontas means to set a course towards and keep it. So, you know, like what does this look like? It looks like, you know, I'm a fisherman, so I'll give a fishing analogy. If, I, if somebody gives me coordinates to a shipwreck, I plug those coordinates in my GPS. The, the GPS is gonna take me directly to, that, to those coordinates and it's gonna beep when I'm there. That's setting a course towards something and keeping course until I get there. So if, if alcohol is something in my heart, and I'll, and I'll expand that to all other substances, 
So you can apply any of the substances that might cause, uh, you know, intoxication in any way. If I set a course towards and keep it, I'm probably in violation of 1 Timothy 3. 3. Yes, you have a question? We have a friend that uh, did a Bible class. Yep. In his community. <laughs> yeah, if we served alcohol, man, they'd be beating down the doors to come in church. <laughs> yeah, the wine and the beer. Okay. So I'm like, that's kind of crazy because not everyone is safe and they're just there until 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, chit chatting. Yep. So then they used the alcohol to do as an attraction to bring them in and everybody was getting home late. It was like kind of off for me. Yeah. Um, so if, if we're a leader in the church, don't do that. Yeah. But. <laughs> It's, inter- it's interesting though, like, it's interesting because I, I, every Monday night I go to the restaurant when my wife is closing up and I, I no longer sit at the bar, but I sit on the booth to the side, but I overhear the people at the bar and it, I can't tell you how many times I hear somebody, they go to Calvary and they're like, hey, uh, you got to come to church with me on Sunday. Oh, I go to the best church. Pastor Doug's the best. Uh, and, they, and they're carrying on it and they get into arguments about Jesus and there's F-bombs going back and forth and you know, and, but it's interesting because somehow, for some re- some way, God still uses that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, we shouldn't, but God still uses that, and so you know, it's up to Him what He uses. Now, the other th- the other thing is, for the, you know, some people say, well, Pastor David, you just gave people a liberty to drink, you know, and I and I would say, well, Jesus drank wine, right? And then who's ever heard the idea that, that alcohol, wine, didn't, it wasn't as potent back then? Who's ever heard that argument before? Anybody ever heard that? Well, guess what? Guess what? The laws of chemistry have not changed in 2,000 years. You put grapes and sugar and water in a barrel, and guess what happens in a week? You got wine. I mean, it's not hard. They figured this out long before Jesus. And, and if, there, if there wasn't... If it, if it didn't make you drunk, then why are there hundreds of Bible verses warning against drunkenness? There was, you know, Noah got off the ark. That's two, two, 2,500 years before, uh, before Jesus. He planted vineyards. And what happened to Noah? He got wasted. He got wasted. All right. And that was one of his em- embarrassing, you know, moments. And so anyway, it's a, it is a debatable topic. It's, it's a gray, it's interesting that the Bible, the qualifier is sort of gray. Do not be given to wine. What does that mean? I think just like Jesus says, uh, you've heard it said not to commit adultery, but he who's looked at a woman with lust, has committed adultery in the heart. I think it's the same kind of thing. It's something that's directed to the heart. What is your heart towards the alcohol? If, you're, if your heart toward, if, if you have a problem with it, that's one thing. But if you don't have a problem with it, but you just kind of like it, well, maybe you actually do have a problem. You just never really recognized it. And so we're going to move on. Any questions on that before we move on? Yeah. No, but I'd like to share a little sure. a short testimony. Sure. About 10 years ago, um, you know, my wife and I do enjoy a glass of wine here and there. And it was all about just, in my mind, mentally, it was one of those things that when I, I, I just felt this, it was a heart issue. It was more of the God just said, I want you to be holy. And I remember stresses of business and other things, and I could find myself, you know, doing five glasses a week, something up to sometimes 10 glasses a week, where you're doing two glasses a night and whatnot, or whatever else. And I'm like, my mind started programming itself to think wine when I was stressed instead of prayer when I was stressed. And oh boy. That's when I realized, wow. and the verse said, the whole week, don't be filled with wine, but be filled with Holy Spirit. Mm. On contrast, so I'm like, here's my glass, that's me as a, as a person. And I can only, if I'm filled with wine, I'm only a tiny bit of Holy Spirit. Mm. But if I have a little tiny bit of wine at the bottom, then I can be filled with Holy Spirit. And I felt like that was that visual for me that just yeah. And mm-hmm. then I started training my mind to thank prayer every time I had that urge yeah. for that. And I was never an alcoholic or anything like that. Right. But just, it became a crutch. It sure. It became a crutch for me. And so, you know, it was one of those things that I just thank God for that, you know. That's a great little insight and wisdom. Sorry, I didn't have my mic on. So I, I was like yelling. I'm like, why am I getting tired? I'm sweating already. <laughs> but um, no, that's great. That's great insight. And, um, you know, I think, I think that 
even in the Titus verse, it says, uh, teach younger men to be sober-minded. So, so this is part of being sober-minded is not being intoxicated. You know, as it talks about looking for the return of Christ, it says, be sober, be vigilant, uh, vigilant. All right? Be sober, be, be vigilant. The, your adversary roams around like a roaring lion. So if, if, we are, if we're intoxicated, even if it's just a little bit, we are less aware of what Satan might be doing. That's right. yep. And so I think that's, that's really good. All right.